It's easy to end up designing characters that don't really have a lot going for them, or don't have much that makes them distinct from your other characters. But there are lots of methods out there that can help you practice designing with more originality and well thought out ideas, and I think also just make character designing more fun. Here are three of those things that I've found really helpful. First is the practice challenge of taking a character, yours or not, could be from your favorite movie or other media, and changing one thing about them. I think one of the best things to try is changing their personality, for which you can make a lot of different variations of the same character, and think about how to design a character with clear traits. Doing this myself, I've taken this character of mine and made an intimidating version and a wise version. It can be a good challenge to try to keep it looking like the same character, but you also might want to just go crazy and end up with something completely different from where you started. Alternatively, you could start completely from scratch and pick out traits at random from a list. I've started on one that includes personality, setting, age, and profession, and by using a random number picker, I ended up with a cunning, medieval slash fantasy, teen, doctor slash healer. Somehow, I've gotten something I think I would make without a randomly selected prompt, but I'm sure next time I do this, I'll end up with something a bit more outside of my bubble. My second thing I recommend trying is a method for developing a character after you have a basic premise for them. It's tempting to just do one drawing before growing attached and never changing anything big from there, but your first iteration probably isn't going to be your best, so it's good to do at least a few. In my designing process for my new Chromacore cadet, Clix, I started with the simple concept of bat person and did these first two drawings. Then, a short time later, I did another drawing of the character, but without looking at my previous drawings. If you don't look at what you've already done, you won't get stuck on what you did for the old one and will make more new choices. With only vague memory of what I had made before, I ended up with this second version. You can see that I started exploring new ideas, like making her more sci-fi and giving her a sword. I then did this a third time, again not looking at any of my previous versions, and drew this. This time, I had creepy fairy tale aesthetics on the mind and felt a lot happier with this overall design than with what I had done before. When you put all the sketches side by side, you can then pick out what aspects of each you want to keep. For the first, I think the personality I want to go for is the clearest, and in the second, I had the best shapes. So I took these things, added them back into the third version, and then was able to make my final version of the character. I'm very glad I didn't get hung up on the first sketches I did because it it definitely would have limited the design and prevented me from having the fun ideas that I added to the character later on. The third thing I want to mention is the classic challenge of taking a picture or a random object and designing a character based on it. You can browse pictures that you've taken, ones on the internet, or look at the objects you have in the room around you. Just as I'm writing this part of the video, I looked over at the outlet next to me and decided to make that into a character. I know I never would have designed anything like this just from my head, so this is a great way to end up with characters that really feel original. This artist, Ramon, is a popular example of doing this and very good at it. So I'll link their art station in the description if you'd like to look at more of their work for inspiration. If creative design and things like characters is something you tend to struggle with, here's an older video of mine that you might find helpful. Thanks for watching!